Hey guys, this is Hemant from Edureka. Welcome to this session on what is AWS. So without wasting any time, let's skip on to the agenda to see what all we'll be covering in today's session. So we'll start this session by first discussing what is AWS and then move on to discuss the different companies who are using the AWS service. Once we're done with that, we'll move on to discuss why companies, big or small, are using AWS or any other cloud provider for that matter, right? So once we've discussed what is AWS and why AWS is important, we'll look at some of the basic services that AWS has to offer us and then move on to discuss the AWS global infrastructure. Once we're done with that, we'll end the session by discussing the various pricing options provided by AWS, right? So guys, this is our agenda for today. I hope it's clear to you. Now let's go on and discuss the first topic of today's session, which is what is AWS? So guys, AWS, that is Amazon Web Services, is a subsidiary of Amazon.com and is the world leader in cloud computing market, right? It was launched way back in 2006 when no company had the cloud computing business model. It took the risk and now today 70% of the whole cloud computing market is residing on AWS. So now you can imagine how big AWS is, right? Talking about companies who are on AWS, let's look at some of the companies, some of the prominent companies who are using the AWS infrastructure. Uh, so these are some of the very popular companies like Kellogg's, Adobe, Airbnb, General Electric, uh, Netflix and Amazon, which are using the AWS infrastructure for their operations. Now Netflix and Amazon are completely dependent upon the AWS infrastructure. Now you can imagine if these two companies which are so big and the, the whole world is using it even your application is going to share the same infrastructure as these apps. So you can imagine that your application is in safe hands, right? You can be assured with that. Having said that, let's move on to discuss but why do companies use AWS and what's the advantage of having the cloud computing technology with you, right? So let's shed a light on that and for that let's take an example. Say you think of you know starting a business and say your business is Instagram. You think of launching the Instagram application and you have the application ready. So now you have to make it available to the world. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to invest some money, buy some servers and upload your application on it and your application is up and ready, right? So you start with a small user base and you say, okay, so in one month or so, I can expect that so and so users will be there. But your plan doesn't go according to your will and what happens is overnight your application becomes so viral that there are millions of users who are trying to access your application now. So the servers that you had are now very overburdened with the kind of traffic which is coming in and you get very anxious as to what to do. So what you do, you invest some more money, buy some more servers and now the situation seems to be a little normal, right? But guys, servers are machines. We should not forget about it, right? And they are bound to break down. So one fine day what happens is your servers, they go down, they go haywire, and your application is not working anymore. So to fix this, again, you had to hire a maintenance team, which is now going to manage your servers for you. That is any kind of server upgrade which is required, any kind of software up patch which has to be put in. But when your server goes down, replacing it with a new server, all of that is now going to be managed by the maintenance team. Right? So the kind of attention that was required for you to give to your uh, application, it could not get that attention because half of your attention was towards the infrastructure side, which is understandable, right? So these were the problems before cloud computing and one fine day AWS came up and said, but why don't you use my servers, right? I have a stack of servers in my warehouse. Why don't you use some of them, right? And the best thing about it is that, you know, I, you don't have to buy the servers from me. You can just rent them from me use them for the time you wanted to and give them any time you want. Say you give it to me after five hours, you just pay for the five hours time that you used it for, right? At the same time, you don't have to worry about the maintenance, right? I will do the maintenance for my servers. And with this, this was like, you know, the God came in and said, let me help you out. It, it was like that. So this was a very good deal for you because now you're not spending money on buying servers. You're not spending money on the maintenance team. Everything is being managed by AWS and at a very cheap price of per hourly basis, right? So it's very awesome. So moving forward, we've understood why, you know, AWS companies are adopting AWS or any other cloud platform and what exactly is AWS, right? Let's move on to discuss the services now. So let's take an example again here. Let's take the example of a website. So this is a skeleton architecture for a very normal website that is there, right? How does it function? 
the user first he goes onto a website uh, he goes onto the internet and he types in a web address right that web address then goes to a dns server that dns server basically gets that uh, converted into an ip address that ip address points to a load balancer that load balancer in turn is uh, you know distributing the traffic among many of the servers and you end up on any one of these servers this is how it happens right and now this server is again connected to a relational database and this relational database is basically having all the information which is required for your website and also both these entities that is your database and your servers are inside a network so that they can communicate with each other right so these are the basic entities which are there in a cloud computing world right now taking the same problem as before that you know suddenly a whole lot of user group comes in and your servers become overburdened now how do you take care of that so you don't have to take care of anything cloud computing uh, you know the cloud computing model is such that it will take care of itself right so it automatically uh, senses that you know the servers are getting overburdened it adds a server automatically and now your situation becomes normal right so this is how the cloud computing world is going to help you out we discussed it already right but now having seen this architecture how it works now let's look at how these services or how these components will look when we took it from the AWS perspective, right? So when you talk about AWS services, the DNS server that we discussed is called Route 53. The servers, the web servers that we discussed are EC2 servers. The relational database is RDS. The network in which these components will be enclosed in is VPC. And the load balancer is again load balancer. And the property which increases the number of servers and lowers them according to traffic is auto scaling. Right. So these are some of the basic services offered by AWS and these are awesome guys. Right. So these were the services that we were to discuss moving forward. Now let's discuss about the global infrastructure that AWS has to offer. Now AWS provides these many services throughout the globe. It has a global presence. Right. And these orange dots are the regions that AWS has. Right. Each region has multiple zones and zones are nothing but huge data centers with a lot of servers. Right. So probably when you choose America, uh, when you choose the US, so probably you'll be ending uh, somewhere around here, right? If you choose a region, one region is this and the other region is this. One zone would be one circle and this is how it functions, right? So in all, there are 18 geographical regions around the world and in those regions, we have around 50 availability zones, right? So there are 50 huge data centers around the world that are, are at your disposal. Right, but why will you need a global infrastructure is a question, right? So say we take the same example forward the website servers and these servers are now distributed among different places throughout the world. Now, what advantage does it give you? First of all, it helps you in a disaster recovery kind of situation. For example, this server goes down. You all again have these two servers to serve your traffic for, right? So if this server goes down because of power outage or any natural calamity, your application is still up because it has been hosted in different regions, right? This is one advantage. The second advantage is that it serves the purpose of users from different countries. For example, you are in this country and you're trying to access your website. Probably you can access it from this server, right? Rather than having your servers at a one central location, which will not only have more latency that is response time if a customer is out of the country, but also it's a very bad measure to take when we are to consider about disaster recovery, right? So this is the reason that AWS has a global presence that they have a global infrastructure. So it is there because so that your customers can have the lowest latency possible and also you can implement the best disaster recovery measures. All right. Having said that, let's now talk about AWS pricing guys. Now AWS pricing is amazing. You know? So like we discussed, so we have a per hour billing kind of system, right? So and the pricing is also region specific in the sense that each region has different pricing for different services. They don't differ much, but still they are different from each other for each region. So you can choose a region according to your preference. Also, there's a thing called reserved instances. So when you choose reserved instances, you save up to 90% costs. So when you say reserved instances, it basically means you rent the server for a particular term, say a one year term or a three year term. And when you do that, when you compare it with on demand pricing, you save up to 90%, which is awesome, right? And also, there's an option for spot pricing as well, wherein you get incredibly low prices by bidding on servers for a particular price, right? So, you bid on server for, say, I want a server for $2. If a server is available, you get it, 
right you use that server until the server price goes up and once it goes up the server is taken automatically for you right it could be helpful for workloads wherein the work is not that urgent but uh, you want to get it done in the minimum cost possible right so it is helpful in that and with that guys we come to an end to the aws overview thank you guys for attending to this session i hope you guys learned something new today so if you like this video please like and subscribe to our channel and share it to your friends so that they can learn more happy learning